In this video, I'm going to build a laser engraver. A couple of months ago, GearBest.com reached out to me and wanted to support this channel. And so I told them that I was interested in building a laser cutter, which is different than a laser engraver. But I looked on their website and they didn't have anything close to a laser cutter. So I asked them to send me this uh, pretty inexpensive laser engraver. If you go on GearBest's website, it sells for just under $300. So they sent this to me and when it arrived, I opened it up and I couldn't find any instructions or CD or SD card or anything that would tell me how to put this together. I reached out to the contact that sent me this laser engraver and she said that it was a mistake. It was supposed to be fully assembled. And so I sent her a picture of it and she said, okay, I'll try to get something to you. And she sent me a couple of links that didn't work. So in this video, I'm gonna be trying to assemble this laser engraver without any instructions, and I'm gonna see if I can do it, and if I get totally stuck, I'll try to start Googling, and maybe somebody else has figured out how to put it together, but I figured it'd be a little bit more fun to try to put this together without any instructions. So I think the first thing I'll do is take everything out of the box and kind of identify what we have here. Uh, I noticed it came with some laser safety glasses, which is important when you're working with lasers, you know you need to be wearing eye protection, so it's good that they include that. Um, looks like it comes with three NEMA 17 stepper motors. I'm not sure what these are rated at. I don't know what the holding torque is. And then we've got a USB cable. Looks like this is the laser diode itself. I think it's a 2500 milliwatt laser diode. Okay, it's got a little cooling fan on there. Looks like the power supply is on top, that big old inductor. Okay, you can see here the model is FB04. It's a 2500 milliwatt laser. And the wavelength is 445 nanometers. I believe that's in the ultraviolet range. Next, it looks like we have the controller board. Okay, so I'm gonna take the cover off here to get a closer look here. So as expected, it's got an Atmel microcontroller on there. I think it's the Atmel ATmega 328P, which is the same thing that the Arduino Uno has. Um, it's also got the ch 340 G. So that's the USB to serial UART converter, which allows you to plug in a USB cable into your computer and it'll show up as a COM port and you can talk to this over UART. My guess is that this is running some sort of firmware like Gerbil or something like that. And I'm looking closer here at the motor drivers and I, I'm guessing it's the Allegro stepper motor driver. So we've got some uh, cable wraps to help tidy up the wiring. Here we've got the, uh, looks like GT2, the two millimeter pitch uh, timing belt, and then also some pulleys that will go on the stepper motors. I think these are probably the bearings that go on the uh, extruded aluminum, so for the gantries to move in the X and Y direction. So here's a whole bunch of laser cut black acrylic, some structural pieces here. Here are a whole bunch of bolts and screws and things. Here's the power supply. It outputs 12 volts and five amps. And here's some wiring that goes, looks like they go to the motors that go between the stepper motor drivers and the stepper motors. And lastly, this is some black anodized aluminum extrusion. Already tapped for me, that's good. So like I said, there's no instructions, there's no assembly guide, no user manual or SD card or anything that came with this. So it'll be some fun putting this thing together. I think the first thing I'll do is peel all of the uh, paper off of the acrylic pieces. I hate this part, it takes forever. All right, so next I'm probably gonna have to look at a picture of this to kind of get an overall sense of how it goes together. I wanna get an idea of where these uh, main aluminum extrusion pieces go. I wanna know which pieces of acrylic I need to put where and how this kind of all goes together. So I'm probably gonna pull up the computer and just look at a picture real quick of the, of the product listing on GearBest to see if I can put this together. Okay, so here's the listing on GearBest. Like I said, it's uh, 275 bucks. I don't see any instructions to put this thing together on this page. Okay. Okay, look at this disclaimer. Please read and follow the user manual carefully before you assemble or operate the 3D printer. First of all, it's not even a 3D printer. And second, they didn't give me any user manual. I asked for a user manual. Okay, so here's some pictures of it. Okay, so I'm looking at these aluminum extrusions here and it looks like there are three that are kind of big long ones and those form the two sides of the Y axis and then the gantry for the X axis. Uh, looks like these pieces here probably are the feet that go on all four corners. Okay, so I think this big one goes here on the sides on the uh, Y axis. Uh, now this is starting to make sense. So there's three stepper motors and two of them go on the sides for the Y axis and then the other one goes for the X axis. There is no Z axis motor, which makes sense. And now I'm thinking about the two stepper motor drivers that I saw on the board. My guess is that the two Y axis motors will share the same driver. So you actually only need two drivers. So I'll go ahead and start laying this out on the table as I see it here.
Okay, so I've got it laid out how I think it goes. The next step is to take all of these nuts and bolts and stuff and to figure out where they go. So I'm probably gonna have to count out how many I need for the feet and figure out which ones go there, how many I'm gonna need to secure each part and figure out uh, which of these go where. So that'll be my next task. After organizing all of the nuts and bolts, I started assembling the stepper motor drivers on the Y-axis. After that, I assembled the stepper motor on the X-axis. After the stepper motor carriages were finished being assembled, I slid them onto the aluminum extrusion. Then I assembled the cross-section piece. Finally, I assembled the legs on all four corners. All right, I've got the frame mostly together, it seems like. Uh, the next step I'm gonna do is put the timing belts onto the stepper motors. When I first looked at this, I thought, oh crap, I'm gonna have to take this apart because it came with these little T-nuts that are supposed to slide into the aluminum track here and I thought I would have to take them apart so I could slide them in. But actually, if you look closely here, you can actually slide them in and twist it and it actually fits without having to take it apart. So I'm really happy about that. At this point, I've got all the mechanical components complete. I've got all of the belts on and I've got the uh, controller in the back here secured to the frame. So I think it's time to move on to the electronics. Uh, and the first thing I'm gonna do is attach the laser diode to the front here. In order to assemble the laser diode, I actually had to disassemble the X-axis stepper motor carriage. After reassembling the X-axis stepper motor carriage, I put some wire wrap around all of the cables and plugged them into the controller board. I've moved the laser engraver down into my lab. I think I'm ready to do a test cut or a test engrave on this thing. I loaded my logo into Universal G-Code Sender. My plan is to take this piece of MDF and put some blue painter's tape on it. And then the machine is going to cut through the tape and, and kind of make an outline of my logo. And that will allow me to peel off the excess and kind of leave like a mask of my logo. We're gonna see how it works out. Let's try it. My first attempt at cutting through the blue painter's tape was sort of a failure. I had the feed rate set too high, which means that the laser moved around too quickly and didn't get a chance to burn all the way through the blue tape. The second time around, I lowered the feed rate and had much better success. I just sat here in amazement as I watched this laser cut through the blue tape. Okay, so it looks like it's done now. I'm gonna try to start peeling off uh, the outside of the tape and leave just the mask of, of the logo. When it came time to peel off the blue tape, I used an X-Acto knife at first, but then realized that my tweezers were actually a better tool for the job. I was really happy with how this turned out. Essentially what I've made here is like a stencil. I could spray paint this or whatever and then peel off. So that's one of the cool uses for a laser engraver like this is you could cut out any design and make stencils. As I said at the beginning of the video, Gearbest sent me this laser engraver to test out and give an honest review. The pros for this laser engraver is that it works. I got it together and it cut out some things. I didn't get a chance to test the power output or anything like that, but it seems like it works as it's supposed to, it works as advertised, so that's good. The negative is it didn't come with any assembly instructions, no pictures, no software, and I basically got no support from Gearbest on this. I reached out to them in emails and said, hey, 
I don't have a user manual, can you send me something? And they didn't really respond. They sent me some links that didn't really even work. With the lack of support and the lack of documentation, I can't recommend getting this one. Eventually I wanna build a much higher power CO2 laser cutter probably either a 40 watt or an 80 watt. With that high power of a laser, you're actually able to cut through wood and acrylic and that kind of stuff. So that's eventually what I'd like to get to. And this was kind of a stepping stone to get to that point. That's it for this video. I've posted a couple other videos right here that I think you might like. I make a lot of other project videos like this on my channel. If that's something you're into, subscribing to Bite Size will help YouTube's algorithm find and recommend more videos like this for you to watch. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.